Hi booktube, it's Gina and I'm here today to do a what's cheering me up right now video. We'll call this the Friday Reads edition because of course it will contain books. I have had a little bit of a tough week this week and, and when I start feeling a little uh, anxiety or, or challenge, I think it's a really great time to back up a little bit and think about the things in life that are making me happy, cheering me up, and just providing solace and comfort in, in a kind of crazy world sometimes. And since this was a little bit of a tough week, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to step back, look at the things that are making me happy so that I don't just focus on things being difficult. Um, so let's get started. Um, I do have some notes here, so if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my, my trusty little um, notepad. Uh, I got the idea for the What's Cheer Me Up Now videos from one of my favorite YouTubers, Hannah Louise Poston, who I will link, of course, down below. Hannah is a beauty booktuber, a <laughs> booktuber, a beauty YouTuber. We're going to make her an honorary booktuber because she does, she's an avid reader. Every once in a while she talks about a book and I'm like, <gasps> yay, a book talk in a makeup video. Um, but she also really talks about uh, budgeting and making room in life for beautiful things. And I just really love her channel. So if you like beauty at all, or talks about beautiful things and, and budgeting and lifestyle, she's a really, really great channel. Um, but she's given me this idea to really just think about the, the things in life that are making me happy. And so one of the things is her channel, always makes me happy. I I do also have two other YouTube channels. These are booktubers that I would like to talk about because these two channels are really making me happy right now. And the first is Miranda Mills. She is a um, England-based YouTuber. She lives in the countryside in Yorkshire. She has the most beautiful bookshelves full of cozy reads. If you like cozy, definitely check out Miranda. She did a YouTube uh, video this morning with her mother called Tea Reads where they bake something and then they eat it together. They chat about books in just this beautiful setting in their home. So I just love her cozy channel. It's wonderful. And the second cozy channel that I've been really liking recently is the Personal Cozy Project 2021. I love this channel. I hope you check her out. She's trying to make her life cozier and do cozy reading and she does read-alongs and or read like sprints, I think they're called. And she just is a, a really, really fun channel. So I've been watching some of her cozy videos and just really enjoying that too this week. So check that out. Those are my, my YouTube favorites um, that are really cheering me up. The next thing that is cheering me up is I did make a trip to Barnes & Noble this week and I bought two books. Um, one is, I was looking for this the other day so I could show it to you. I had put it on a pile and lost it. This is um, While Justice Sleeps, which is a new mystery novel by Stacey Abrams, who I really admire. I think she is such a smart person and it's really interesting. So I wanted to check out her book. And then I also bought this uh, book that I found on the bargain table by Susan Wittig Albert called Blood Orange. And I just recently read her book, um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a, a cozy mystery set, the, the heroine being Beatrix Potter when she moves to the Lake District. And I thought it was such a cute premise. This of course is not that same series, but I liked that book enough that I was, I thought, oh, for a few dollars, this would be maybe something fun to check out. So I bought that. And then this is a set of note cards. These are so delightful. Um, it's called Bibliophile, and these are note cards by um, the, the um, writer or the artist Jane Mount. And she has done, there are 20 note cards. They're all different little stacks of books. Isn't that adorable? And I don't know if you have heard about her, but Jane Mount did this um, book called The Ideal Bookshelf. And 
she's the uh, the I keep saying author the artist that ha that um, draws the books. But this book is really really fun. I've I've had this on my shelf for a long time. But the finding the note cards at Barnes and Noble reminded me. She actually interviewed, or someone interviewed, different famous people and find their favorite books. This is Nancy Pearl's article. And then she draws their favorite books on a bookshelf. And I just think that that is such a neat idea. Here's Mary Carr. And this has just got a whole bunch of, it's got Malcolm Gladwell, Alice Waters, Thomas Keller. Um, so it's, it's just, a, it's so beautiful. I love, I would love for Jane Mount to do my ideal bookshelf. Would that not be fun? So that, finding those note cards really cheered me up because I think that those are just so beautiful. Um... Oh, so on the on the TV slash Netflix front, I finished Star Trek, the original series. Rather abruptly, I will have to say, I turn that on, I watch it while I'm puttering around after my workday has ended and I'm cooking dinner. And I was watching an episode and all of a sudden, you know, it ended and I was waiting for the next one to start. And it started showing ads for new, cha or for new shows. And I was like, happened and it was over it was very anticlimactic I loved the ep last episode but I forgot it, it just sort of was canceled and there wasn't necessarily like a big you know denouement they didn't um, like these days do a, a big kind of ending episode so that ended rather abruptly but I loved that show so much it's it's oh phew, man it is it is a little crazy to watch something that was done in 1969, uh, but I loved it. And so now I will be starting on Voyager for my next TV extravaganza, which I love. Um, and then, oh, my, my last couple of things is I, I subscribed to a local CSA this week, which is also really fun. So for those of you who don't know, a CSA is a community-sponsored agriculture group, and it's a local farm. Um, this is actually a co-op of, uh, I think, like 20 local farms in my area that are participating in um, delivering a weekly organic food box um, from the farms that are, are local. And that I just absolutely love. So that is really cheering me up because I love to, one, support my local farmers, and two, I don't really have to grocery shop all summer. I mean, I'll, of course, I go to the store. Um, but all of my fruits and vegetables will be provided to me from a local farmer. So I absolutely love that. And then lastly, the books that I have read. Um, I finished this week Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. This was not what I was expecting at all. I had heard that before. I, I was a big fan as a kid of the movie Mary Poppins with Julie Andrews, of course, and the soundtrack, which we had a record of. And we I just remember being like 10 years old, coming home from church, putting music on, running around, cleaning the house, doing chores, singing at the top of our lungs, the Mary Poppins soundtrack. So that just, this really brought back memories. Although the book is nothing like the movie. Um, it's, it doesn't really have any overarching uh, storyline like the movie does. It's more um, little vignettes almost of, of adventures that Mary Poppins and the kids go on. And Mary in this book is much more curmudgeonly and pickly than Mary Poppins in the movie, but it was still wonderful to read. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, on my Kindle, I am reading Bleak House still and The Overstory, and those are two obviously chunky books. I think I'm going to actually put Bleak House aside for a little bit because I do want to finish The Overstory. I'm going to focus on that. I like to read mul multiple books at one time, but I'm finding that two big books like that, it doesn't really work. Um, I can do like a little book like 
this and do a chunky book on my Kindle, but um, having kind of multiple big books going on, I, I'm losing the threads of the story. So I think I'm gonna put aside Bleak House temporarily. I'll come back to that for my next big chunky read. And then I'm gonna focus on the overstory. So that one is still ongoing. Um, I also did get my weekly free ebook from Dean Street Press. So if you don't know, Dean Street Press is a wonderful publisher. They do a lot of um, sort of the mid, mid early, mid-century, uh, sort of forgotten women authors, and they're doing a weekly free ebook. Um, and I just got Molly Thin's uh, The Drake Hot Murder Mystery, another Golden Age mystery from 1928, and I just downloaded that. Um, on my Kindle, so those are a lot of fun because I love those um, 1900 to 1950 kind of um, women authors. And so I will probably do a wrap up and include these for the readathon that um, Katie, <clears throat> excuse me, Katie at Books and Things is doing. I wasn't really planning on participating officially in that readathon, but I realized I've actually read a few books, including Mary Poppins and this mystery, and I got a D.E. Stevenson, a D.E. Stevens book that I'm I just started. So I'm kind of that's one of the the default genres that I love so much. So I'll probably talk about some of these books in relation to that readathon because I think that's a really really fun idea and definitely one of my uh, favorite genres. Um, and let's see, what else? I think that's actually it. So I've had a, I have had, even though I had a really weird and, and challenging week this week, there were many, many good things that happened, lots of things that I, I'm so grateful for, um, of which, you know, I've got my wonderful cats, I've got my wonderful booktube friends, I've got um, my my spouse, not not lastly, he ended up on the last of the list here, but he's at the top of the list, and um, just enjoying the the beautiful springtime weather here in Seattle. It has been delightful. So thank you so much for being here, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.